It's funny too, you brought that up when we met in Tennessee, you were like, Hey, last week I was actually thinking about the potential of bringing you in. Yeah. What's the deal? Why couldn't we get playoff? Why, <laughs> yeah. why couldn't we get playoff? <laughs> William Vegas? Yeah. yeah. You guys well, I think like at least three more games. It was cool. He sees me out. He's like, yeah, I'm Dave Zug. I'm the GM with the Raiders. And I'm just thinking like, this is Taylor's guidance counselor from high school. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yo, nice to meet you. And we said all that stuff and joked a little bit. And, you know, I'm like, Hey, you're 10. I started doing a punt set in front of him. I'm like, I can get you. I can get you. Yeah. I can get you a tryout right now. What do you want to see? And we're laughing. The, That's the, the scouting report on Will. Lunch pail guy. Hold, yeah, but hold on. Wait, hold on, wait, hold on. Let me throw. I got some. Yeah. I got some I adjectives. Hear, um, you were with the Patriots when in two thousand. When did you come out? Two thousand thirteen. Two thousand thirteen. That was my first year. Okay. Do you remember Will Compton in two thousand thirteen? I don't. That's okay. I don't. He was undrafted. You know, yeah, he that's okay. And I wasn't that on the. Was a, I wasn't was on the college scouting side right. either. I was a pro scout at the time. Sean McVay would have remembered. Sean McVay. Yeah, she would definitely remember. He has a much better memory. <laughs> he has, uh, so, <laughs> let's go, Will Compton. When there was more tread on the tires, let's say yeah. four years ago. Yep. Um, hard nosed. Oh. Instinctive in terms of re reading blocking patterns, like you know the puller goes, Will's gone. He's off the spot and he's coming downhill. Undersized, but will take. Yep. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, Limited athletically. Undersized. <laughs> But what we always look for, do they, do they, does he have a willingness to take on? Like, Will wasn't scared to go down and put his face mask on somebody, you know? Not the longest guy in terms of arm length here. Yeah. We're not talking about 34-inch arms. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. We, we saw myself with the arm yeah. in the arm. You know, so, but, so there, there was, you know, physicality, but there was a tendency to get caught up on some blocks. Yeah. You know, so he, he had to win with his instincts, being able to read kind of the, read the play, read the formation, get off the spot quick. Short area quickness was not bad with this guy now in a short space. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about going, but uh, he had some short on, short man. area quickness yeah. and explosiveness to beat blockers to the point, get downhill, good wrap tackler, get guys to the ground. You want him out on first and second down. Didn't really see a big role on third down in terms of getting in space and really covering. He'd use his instincts and in zone to be able to get in the windows and squeeze on guys and take guys out of the play. Um, so that was kind of the passing side of him. And then on the kicking game, Hell on, hell on wheels. Hell on oh. wheels, brother. Hell on oh. wheels. Hey, buddy. Instinctive. Flow, flow fast, backer on the kickoff game. The kickoff heart, game. You know, but the college character, that's all the adjectives. Lunch pail guy. Yeah. You know, you're going to love him in the room. Yeah. You know, strength, strength, strength staff yeah. loves this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Date your daughter type. Oh, you know, like, I don't know about that one. Holy I'm, just, I'm just telling you. Come on, I'm just, I need that. I'm just telling you what they said. Uh -huh. You know, he's going to be, he's going to be every coach's dream going to work hard, give you everything you got, you know, bring guys along with them. So he had all the intangibles too. Back to this year, we there was a threshold. It's playoff Willie. You know what I mean? So you 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 don't want to squeeze the juice too early. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? So like right, right, right. we we you did say what our record was. Do you know what I mean? And so we were kind of always fighting uphill. We started off 0 and 3. And so we were kind of then we won 3 or 4 in a row and so like the Willie meter started going a little bit, you know? But then we lost a couple close ones, and it was less like, if I'm gonna bring, we're gonna bring playoff Willie in. It's got to be, you're bringing him in to punch it home, right? To take it over. Is that, that is that, that legit? Striking distance. Is that legit? That's how I feel. When you when you were when hey, we you're were, the boss. I'm just saying when we were in Tennessee and you were like, hey, last week I was thinking about was is that legit? You're like taking into account where we could be at. Hundred percent with you in particular. I appreciate that. Yeah, that, that, hey, that, that the I haters feel are little, sick. I know the haters really are sick. Everything the narrative you've written for yourself via yeah. the bird, I, I actually just come to fruition. Yeah, right I appreciated his breakdown too, just because like he said some of the things that like you know you, you don't know necessarily like when he says rap tackler, like not a thumper. He talks about the short a short area stuff. He talked about the third down stuff, and I I feel like he, that is all he better. nailed you. Yeah, I feel like he he nailed, he you. nailed me. Wow, he knows me better than I that know was myself. Good, Zig. Appreciate hey, it. Hey. Raider Nation should be happy. No, if you can break down, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, hold on. I want to make you guys were legit. Was there a legit? There was a legit consideration to bring him in. Hundred percent. And 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 because of like his, um, just talking to guys like Max and guys that were with him the year before, um, and 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 again, this is just this is what they said. Like the he 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 brings a a, a level of excitement, a level of juice, a level of energy to practice. Um, 
lightheartedness, you know, and, and, and I think guys appreciate that, you know what I mean? And so, and he's consistent with it from what they said. And so, yeah, to bring somebody that's going to bring positive energy, that's going to take on any role that you're willing to give them, that's going to bust their ass at practice. That's going to bring good vibes, like good vibes, good vibes, good vibes, good vibes. Dang, that fire literally, uh, that was it. I know I'm like sitting here, you know, I'm like, you're smiling. Like your cheeks probably hurt a little red. bit from smiling. Getting a little red. Like, yeah. Like, Give me um. Let's turn the page. Uh, what I did when I well. Let's, let's turn the page to the negative category. <coughs> I want to hear the bad. I want to hear the bad about Will Compton. Well, what are your negative shots? Well, the bad would be well. The bad would be first and second down only. Not going to really have a role on third down because the coverage stuff isn't good enough. Doesn't have enough speed to like match and man and run with tight run with Darren Waller down the seam and things of that nature. I liked him up every damn practice, but go ahead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I did mention the arm length. Yeah. It's, you know, so there's going to be a tendency to get caught on some blocks, big, long physical offensive lineman. Like, you know, he's going to have to come down and hit you with his face or beat you with quickness. And so there's going to be times where he just gets locked up because he doesn't have that arm length. Um, really that's about it. Yeah, that's not bad. I, I know, like when I when um, I think it was sixteen or seventeen when Zach Brown had came in, and then I got demoted to like the number three guy. Uh, when Kirk Alvadai sat down with me, it was more of like when deciding between like m myself and Mason Foster. It was more of like Mason could get out of the consensus in the scouting department. Mason could get out of more bad situations than I could. I usually had to be right the majority of the time to make all of the plays I needed to make. In my head, I'm thinking, well, I am, I'm going to be right the majority of the time, but that's usually like the consensus is he's got to, he's got to, you know, guess right, I guess, the majority of the time because yeah. it's hard to get out of bad situation because of all the limited, all the limited ceiling stuff that is placed yeah. on the player. Myself. Yeah. White, 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 white. white. Yeah, you mean yeah, white, white short arms. That is tough. Ray but always let me know I had short arms. Will, we're not putting you on punt return. Like you're not going to be able to get your arms on guys. Now your arms aren't exceptionally long. Yeah, here we go. Right, Exceptionally long, game? and I, 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 I felt those long Except arms a couple weeks ago. No, but I, but you caught hands, and I stopped. You <laughs> tried to beat up a guy that <laughs> post ACL. Even when you had those long arms, see, I had to like defeat. I had to like defeat hands just to try to get inside. I know, and I had you. Exceptional For athlete, minute. though. And I will say this. I will say this about about Taylor Luan. Is here we go. <laughs> he came to Chaparral his senior year. Now this guy was playing nose tackle at Cactus Shadows. I don't even know if they put him on the offensive line. Nope. At the time. Uh, he, Side note, yeah, my sophomore year, I was moved up to varsity. Not a big deal. And they put me at left tackle. Trey Stevens got three sacks in a row on me. I couldn't get out of my got stance. So they, I didn't they know. They put him back at nose tackle. They put me at nose tackle. Um, Bull rush. But when we, when, we had, when we brought Taylor in and we moved him to left tackle, and we actually had an ex an NFL coach, Rod Hemanek, mm -hmm. who had retired out in Scottsdale. He used to coach for the New England Patriots. He happens just to be coaching all O line at Chaparral when Taylor comes in. So never played O line. He comes in. He has an NFL coach. Um, but I would say he came in in the spring. By the time we got to October, uh, one we knew he was going to be a major Division One guy because in the spring we had a guy named Craig Rowe, yep. who had about twenty three Division One offers. Yeah, he was already like uh, Under Armour All American. Yeah, that's what he's yeah, you essentially. Told me about him. He's essentially crazy reason why I transferred. Because I knew all these coaches were going to come in. I was, and my dad made me transfer. I was like, the coaches are going to see you and think, big friend, we can do something with it. And they and did. The coaches came in, and this guy had like 20 offers before. But when we got to October, this is no – I've never told you this. Um, me and Charlie Ragel, who's now at Arizona State, right. we said this guy's going to play in the NFL. Nice. What's, uh, what's Taylor's scouting report? Well, I mean, this guy's a first-round pick, so there's a lot of – Say Taylor – yeah, yeah. He's, Let's do Taylor three years ago. Well, let's do Taylor like if Taylor was a free agent and he was you were doing a there's a scouting board on Taylor right now at 30 years old, 31, 31 years 31. old. He's uh, 275 pounds. <laughs> no, I'm talking like you're you're a player. You're well, a I just player. say Taylor. I'll get the question. Okay, I'm, I'm still, asking I'm the question. Player. Taylor's overall. <laughs> yeah, well, I, know, I would say Taylor's saying, overall ask... scouting report. To be honest with you, it stayed pretty consistent since the time that he's been in the league. Now, when he first got in, his technique wasn't very good, and so he improved a lot from a technical standpoint. But Taylor, exceptional athlete for his size. I mean, this guy is an ex – I know we don't want to blow up his head too big. I need this. But, <laughs> it's been a rough year. Um, <laughs> very rare guys who can play no, on space. Rare, as rare a, athlete yeah. for his size. Um, and so, like, all, like, the ability to – like, the lateral agility, the speed to kick and get to the – 
the what I'm using scouting terms now, but to get to the junction point, the junction point is where the tackle and the you know the that that line of demarcation where he either can turn the corner and get to the quarterback or the tackle wins to that point. Like he had tremendous speed, you know, in his kick, the the ability to redirect laterally, like you know guy comes uh, the guy presses your outside shoulder he tries to beat you across his face the ability the ability to react and slide and stay in front um unique um ability to play in the screen game pull run get to the second level because of how athletic he was was unique and i think the thing that taylor did as a left tackle that not a lot of left tackles is the nastiness that he played with because you like back in the day when i came up like the run blockers all played right tackle and then like the vanesse kind of softer guys played left tackle but taylor really like as a run blocker even though he wasn't the most powerful guy like he was trying to like demolish people and so he brought that like that physical kind of right tackle mentality as a run blocker he brought it to left tackle and i think that's what a lot of people were attracted by he has this like tenacity and this nastiness but he's this athletic kind of finished beyond the whistle you know pretty guy um in terms of his skill set and so that was all unique and that was all what made him uh, first round draft pick yeah. and and he had all that in high school too i mean in practice this guy was an asshole he'd be blocking you know little timmy over you know 40 yards the opposite way and you Thanks. know and like burying guys on the track and like even in games i mean he would drive we would we would be ripping his butt on the sideline because it was like the fourth 15 yard penalty because our running back broke it for 70 yards and he's driving the guy the other way Dwayne Garrett 30 yards Dwayne Garrett yeah yeah and so um so that's all the positive I'd say the negative um had always probably been a little bit like if you were going to win it was being able to get underneath his pads and drive him into the pocket with power like to be able to sit and anchor um I would say was probably the more inconsistent part of his game, especially early on. I think he got stronger and, and um, he could always bend and sink, but it was the strength that I think developed from like your beginning of your career to like that middle and end of your career, you were able to improve, um, you know, with your anchor. And then I'd say um, from the counseling piece, I'm going to get psychological. Where you kind of know him a little differently. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he can get into his own head a little bit. And so I think like the, like we talked about like Chandler Jones. You're free to, you're, you, uh, this is a free space to speak. Space. I, I, yeah, I want to hear it. I okay. actually want to hear this. Yeah. So I think like Taylor can do some negative self-talk and kind of get him in a space where like he's not positive with himself. And so like things could snowball a little bit and, and um, one bad play could turn into two bad plays. And I think like, um, I think you've always had a little bit of that. Um, and, and, and so I think that was like, again, I don't know, I haven't been around him for a lot, for a lot of years, but I think like that was one thing that he's anchor and then just not letting a bad, bad series or a bad play snowball. Cause I know he's on the sideline telling himself like not good things about himself. Mm-hmm. I'll yeah, tell you what, that's he, probably, he's, he's, that's pretty spot on. Yeah. He's an expert.